My name is Jay Calkley. I've developed, developed oilfieldtrash.com just for stuff like this. This is what I call nearly true stories, and I hope you like them. This particular story is called Fishing with Endless Rope. Back in 1974 in Portuguese West Africa, Angola, uh, they had a little revolution going on. The MPLA, FNLA, UNITA, uh, all were fighting the Portuguese army to try to over overthrow the Portuguese government. Well, there was quite a stink going on, and uh, so a lot of the people uh, were having to leave the country. Halliburton decided that uh, they'd pull a bunch of the married folks out and put somebody just like me in there. Well, I went down there, and a uh, the fellow that was running Gulf was named Andy Cook from Crane, Texas, and he was a real nice fellow. Matter of fact, he used to uh, trade at my daddy's gas station in Crane, and uh, I knew him, his kids, and, and his mother, and the whole trick. He was a he was a great man. Uh, this this deal here was uh, was pretty good because. Cabinda was a satellite country uh, north of Angola and north of the of the Congo River. Well, the Gulf had a huge concession up there, and they had this drilling rig running a brand new one called the Key Victoria. Well, the Key Victoria uh, was owned by a guy named Virgil Stone, and uh, he decided since it would be pleasant to the eye to paint all these drilling rigs uh, pea green. Well, the drilling rig uh, on the rig floor had the Halliburton units, which was, which was bright red. And uh, so it was, like I say, it was brand new. And uh, Claude Mason was the company man. He was out of San Francisco, and you couldn't find a better company man in the world than that fellow. I mean, he was really nice. He and I drank more Kuka Special beer than you could run and jump over. That Kuka Special, especially during this time of the, of the, of the, of the world that was going on, uh, you open one of them up and smell of it, and if it smelled like a skunk's ass, you didn't drink it because it would make you sick as a dog. But you pour it out and drink the rest of them, so it would be all right. Probably five or six out of case beer was always uh, pretty skunky, but it, it was definitely the only thing that you had to drink. We didn't even have any uh, uh, tonic water to go in our gin. I mean, things was tough, tough down there. Uh, we didn't have uh, gas to... to uh, have it. your stove. We had to pump up a little old coal oil lantern type deal just to make coffee with in the morning. It's it really sucked. But in any event, uh, Key Drill uh, hired a bunch of uh, Zaire dudes to work on this drilling rig since we were just right offshore of Zaire, and they spoke French all the time. Well, since none of us spoke French, we were using Portuguese and English, uh, and since these guys spoke only French. Key Drill decided that they'd hire them a, a, a bunch of Kunash drillers out of Louisiana that spoke French. Well, that turned out to be a pretty good idea because they could at least communicate with them a little bit. Well, these cats that on the rig floor had t-shirts and cut off blue jeans and that was it because we didn't have any boots that would fit them. Their feet were so wide they never had had any boots on before and their wood shoes or anything else. Their feet were so wide that nothing would fit on their dying feet. So they're roughnecking on the floor, on the floor, with no boots on. I mean, it, it was amazing. They'd do anything that you wanted them to do, but when it all came down to the nut cutting, they didn't have any idea of what to do. So you had to hurt them and get them to do what they wanted, what you needed done. Well, Claude and I were out there, and we were going to drill, well, we did drill this uh, uh, top hole, and we were going to set 13 3 casing in the diggings. Well, as it turned out, we didn't have any uh, togs that could turn the pipes. So we had to take an endless rope, and you wrap that around the pipe once you got it got it threaded, get it started, wrap that stuff around it, and then pull it with a cat head and tighten it up. Then take your regular tongs and tighten it up, and it worked out just fine. So we put all this pipe in the hole, had plenty of rat holes, so went in there and put the uh, landed the casing right down in the rotary table about three foot off the floor. Well, the head was laying there, and Claude was on the, uh, on the cat head, or on the, the air hoist, and so I went over and I got ready to pick up that head and stab it. I had to plug it all in it. We was gonna gonna uh, cement the the casing in the hole. And uh, so I walked over to that pipe and all these Zaire dudes are standing around me. So I looked down in that pipe and I hollered, "Hello!" Well, it echoed back, "Hello." I went, "Wow, I think there's somebody in there, Claude." And I leaned over again. I say, "Hello," and it echoed back. Well, these guys from Zaire. 
I'm serious. They every time that I do that, their eyes would just get bigger and bigger. They, every time you get their attention, they'd get to doing that, and then they'd bark like a monkey. They go, oh, and so I'd say hello, and they go hello, hello back at me, and their eyes just getting bigger and bigger all the time, and barking like a bunch of monkeys would do. Oh, 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 oh. I said, Claude, there's somebody down in the dang hole. And so I got the endless rope that we had just run all this case down hole with, and I took it and put it on the air hoist, and Claude and I went to fishing for the guy that was down there, and I'd say, get the rope, rope, rope. And it was just hilarious. We were having more fun with these guys than you could ever imagine. And we messed with them there for about five minutes, and then we said, oh, hell with it. We'll just go ahead and, and rig this thing up and see many. So I took the endless rope off, and... They helped me stab this this uh, cement and head on there, and we cemented the dang deal. It just wasn't a problem at all. We did have to do a top outside job, and uh, right after we got got ready to do that, I realized that I cemented up this brand new Halliburton unit, and so it took a few minutes to get that thing uh, uh, uncemented. It, it wasn't all that that bad, but still, Claude was real proud of me, and it, it's kind of hard to, to think about. Uh, uh, cementing up the very first time that the unit had ever been used. In any event, we went ahead and we got the top outside job done, got it all cleaned up and put up, and everything was just fine. Well, the next day, uh, Claude and I were in the uh, company man's office just sitting around there visiting, and two policemen walked through the door. And uh, they'd come in on a rig boat. And unbeknownst to us, they were there to arrest Claude and I. Well, they arrested us for killing that guy and leaving him in the hole. Uh, it uh, it was <laughs> kind of touch and go, trying to explain to them, uh, you know, that we hadn't killed anybody. But anyway, uh, Claude and I got off the the drilling rig and had to go to town. And uh, once we got into the to the village, well, uh, here this thing goes on about us killing this man on a drilling rig, leaving him down in the pipe. And we had to explain to these people that, and try to do that in, in Portuguese and in English and in French, uh, what an echo was. That it was just an echo. Well, it took hours, but we finally did convince them that there was no one lost on the rig. And had we not had uh, the rig count, proper rig count, if somebody was missing, we'd have been still be in the jailhouse. But in any event, we got off of it. But when it when it <laughs> comes down to it. You learn not to be able, not be out there messing around and, and uh, doing things like that because you can sure get your butt in trouble real quick. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of these stories like this, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I, I won't I won't tell a bunch more, but I'm, this is just the first getting started, and uh, you'll have to bear with me because I'll get better at it. Appreciate it. Hope y'all look at, at some more of them.